Welcome back Budget Gamer fans. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Magicat. Now if you've seen this one out on the eShop and thought it looked as lame as it sounded, I hate to inform you, but you're actually kind of wrong. Though Magicat's story is as simple as somebody stole a gem and Magicat is now trying to get it back, the game actually has a lot of really solid platforming. Overall, there are over 60 levels across 8 different worlds, and there's actually a boss at the end of basically every single level stage. Meaning that even though you can blow through each individual level pretty quickly, there's still a challenging boss at the end of each, which really does a lot to enrich the gameplay. Even though each world contains several different levels, each world actually holds true to its own theme. One being kind of foresty, while the other being desert or winter, while still others seem to resemble those kind of Mario Castle Bowser levels. As you would expect from any good platformer highlighting a pixelated cat as its main character, you'll be jumping, dashing, and spitting hairballs at every enemy you come across. And though simply beating the levels and crushing the bosses does consist of basically jumping and spitting your magic paw-shaped hairballs, in each level there are gems as well as coins and potions which actually contribute to the overall gameplay at large. Blue potions which can be picked up in any level and unfortunately do start afresh at every single level afford you the ability to do your magical dash as well as purchase checkpoints and continues. Checkpoints as with true mobile style get more expensive as you progress through the level as do revives and or continues the more you use them. Revives starting out at 2 potions, going to 4, 8, and so on and so forth. Though thankfully continues cap out at about 10. Gems and coins though are used for completely different purposes. If you make it far enough into the actual game map you'll encounter shops. At each shop you're able to spend these gems on certain items that are able to be used in the overworld map. And this actually is kind of a cool feature. These can range anywhere from items that allow you to crush obstacles in the map to allow you to actually advance further in the game, to items which reduce the cost of continues and checkpoints, and even items that reveal hidden things on the overworld map. However, it's the coins that you've been collecting that allow you to actually use these items. Crushing an object on your map with a magical hammer costs three little paw print things. But it takes a hundred coins gained within the gameplay to create one little paw print. So by and large, there are actually three forms of currency in this game. The blue potions, the gems themselves, and the little paw prints that are gained one per hundred coins. And each of these work together to aid your progression through the game itself. As you play through each level of Magic Cat, expectedly the enemies get more intense and the puzzles might get a little more difficult to solve. But each area, even inside each world, gets a little more diverse as you play through each of the levels. Incorporation of areas that you have to swim through or dive down under, climbing screens, or just a huge increase in the number of enemies will increase the level difficulty, but also reflect the difficulty of the coming boss. However, if you stocked up on your blue potions or managed to actually buy a checkpoint right before the boss, there's really nothing to worry about. Because as soon as you're able to memorize his attack patterns, it generally becomes no big deal. Most boss fights in Magic Cat, like any good platformer, are mere a memorization of a sequence of patterns. Though overall once you get the feel of it, it becomes a lot less about actually fighting the boss and about timing and jumping through certain patterns. I do have to say though that with the sheer amount of bosses, even though you can memorize the patterns pretty quickly, the diversity of the game and the challenge is actually still very alive. Overall the graphic simplicity is really well suited to the type of platformer it is, but the music isn't quite as well developed. Though each world definitely does bring its own music to the table, most of the world's music is similar enough that it does seem to become very repetitive very quickly. And though it doesn't particularly detract from gameplay as a very plunky repetitious soundtrack, it's just something that is definitely a note for improvement. Overall though I'd have to say as far as cheap indies are concerned, Magic Cat's actually a really satisfying and broad platformer. There's a huge amount of diversity in the types of characters and the way they're confronted, as well as the type of logic and timed based puzzles you actually find inside the levels. These are generally only dedicated to finding gems, so if you don't care, don't do them, just focus on the platforming. Because there's going to be plenty of opportunities to stumble across gems as you play through the 60 some odd levels. The integration of slight levels of interaction in the overworld map was really cool, and I really have to say, from looking at the eShop, I really didn't expect this much from the game. And while I'm not saying that you're going to live the rest of your life in regret if you don't play Magic Cat, it is really fun and pretty cheap. So if you're a fan of platformers, feel free to give this one a shot, but if you're not, maybe wait till it goes on sale because this one actually is really easy to get into. And as there's not really much to it as far as mechanics or story is concerned, that about wraps up the review of Magic Cat on the Switch eShop. So if you found the review interesting or somewhat helpful, feel free to throw me a comment or a like to show your support. And don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. These videos are coming out all the time, so there's always going to be some new indie to find. But otherwise, this has been Budget Gamer, and as always, thanks for watching.